Hello guys. Myself Nicole Ram. And today we are going to see the basic characteristics of airfoil. And sometimes British call them as aerofoil. But both means all the same. Now we will see what is airfoil. It can be said as streamlined cross-sectional profile of the wing or propeller of aircraft and sometimes sail upon which their contour and performance depends when they are subjected to airflow. So here are some airfoils which I am drawing here on which I will be labeling their characteristics and later I will be defining them along with the airfoil types. By the way my drawing is not good. Ok let's see how it will get formed. Here is the first one which went narrow tapered and so on like a molten drop traveling in horizontal direction. But the second and third one went somewhat good. Here are their parameters. The vertical line drawn at the aft of the airfoil shows the trailing edge of the airfoil. Frontmost vertical line shows the leading edge of the airfoil. The radius of yellow circle drawn inside the leading edge of second airfoil determines the curvature nature of the airfoil's contour and this circle is termed as nose circle. Now comes the straight distance between those vertical lines. That is, straight distance from leading edge to trailing edge which is defined as chord line. Next comes the camber line, in fact this is mean camber line which runs along the curvature of the airfoil. And the uppermost part of airfoil is upper surface. And the lowermost part of airfoil is lower surface. This is the description of the stuff that I have explained till now. If you want to make a note of it you can pause the video and carry on notings. Now comes the another airfoil in which I will be showing the upper part of the camber line lower camber which is lower part of the camber line and the maximum thickness which is maximum distance between upper and lower surface please understand and note these things very carefully because in the next video in which I will explaining the NACA airfoil series you will see these parameters now we will see some non-dimensional numbers which gives a quick idea on the airfoil profiles first comes thickness ratio it is the ratio of thickness of airfoil to the cord of airfoil. That is T by C. I repeat it is the ratio of thickness to cord of airfoil. Next comes thinness ratio. Which is the inverse of thickness ratio. That is it is ratio of cord to thickness of airfoil. For some high speed airfoils. Thinness ratio goes up to 15 to 20. Whereas for high lift airfoils. Thinness ratio goes up to 8 to 9 and max 10. Now we will see the types of airfoil. First comes symmetric airfoil. In which upper camber region will be equal to lower camber region. Note here the camber means distance between cord line and camber line. Which in case of symmetric airfoil is zero as both lines are overlapped on one another. You can see this type of airfoil in the main plane section of high-speed aircraft providing same amount of lift when aircraft maneuvers upside down. And in tail plane of transport category aircraft as it provides same amount of deflection in both side of moments. That is up and down or right or left. As camber will be zero, it gives no lift at zero angle of attack. Now we will see asymmetric airfoils, which has non-zero camber. It is used in main plane of transport or subsonic planes. This creates positive lift at zero angle of attack making the plane to get off from ground at lower air speeds and also creates more induced drag which is not good. Now we will see that the last one. That is reflex airfoil. Which has negative camber that is cord line lies above the camber line. Normally it's used in spoilers of automobile and aircraft that break down the lift and increases then down force which increases the traction for better grip and braking and also for turning. Well then. That's all for today. Please to like the video and subscribe my channel. If you have any suggestions or requests, please do mention in the comment section. Thank you and have a good day.